Hello and welcome to Weird Around Illinois. I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but cryptids are kind of hard to find. Today we're going to find out why. Let's get weird. So, if you watch as many cryptid shows as I do and look at these things on the internet as much as we do, you'll notice that there are no good real pictures or video of Bigfoot or Dogman out there. I mean, th there's the old Patterson-Gimlin film of Bigfoot, and even that one I don't consider 100% conclusive. I mean, it's not perfect. They they've done a lot of restoration on it to make it look better, but the original film was pretty much trash. And every other video that you see of a cryptid, it's peeking behind a tree, or it's some amorphous blob in the distance that could be Bigfoot, or could be Dogman, or could be Mothman, but you're not really sure. Yeah, it's always, it, it always seemed to be low quality footage anyway. I mean, And then, you know, the other thing is, there's no, like, physical evidence of cryptids being found. I mean, yes, you find footprints, people find hair that they can't always identify through DNA testing, but none of that is like 100% conclusive, like, you know, as uh, they'd say on Bigfoot is real, you know, nobody's found a body. You know, nobody, nobody's put one on a slab to be analyzed. This is one that's always bugged me. Have you ever noticed that the people who hunt for cryptids are never the ones who actually find them? Mm -hmm. with, with the exception of mountain monsters who surprisingly manage to find something every episode, and I'll leave that up to your interpretation, but everyone else it's always some guy driving home in his truck who sees bigfoot plain as day acro crossing the road or it's you know the woman who's going out on her back porch at night who sees dog man you know hunkered down in the woods yeah it almost feels like pure luck at that point but it seems kind of impossible for that to be the case uh, i mean it makes you doubt the existence of cryptids yeah but there are so many of these random eyewitnesses, it's really hard to discount them completely. But it makes you wonder if the people who are hunting for cryptids don't know as much about them as we think they do. But let's take a look at the actual creatures themselves and what they might be doing to evade capture and to evade being seen by you know, the hunters and also being uh, avoid being caught on camera. So. The first thing I would do is look at them like animals. Um, there's an old Cherokee saying that you only see an animal if he wants to be seen. Um, they even say that the animals they hunt, you know, if they're hunting deer, you're only going to see a deer when that deer is ready to die. And I would think the same logic kind of applies to cryptids. Yeah. Well, that would uh, explain why there's not many good videos of them. Mm hmm. Because if they don't want to be on video, they could just somehow avoid it maybe right exactly you know keep in mind that again looking at these creatures as animals and i know you can argue that they're more human than animal in some cases but animals in general have better hearing better eyesight and a better sense of smell than we do which means they know we're coming they hear us they see us they smell us and if if they want to be in a different place when we get there they will be much faster senses yeah you know, the other thing about both animals and, you know, the, these cryptids we're talking about, they often have a natural camouflage. You know, we've talked before about the different colors of Bigfoot and Dogman, and there seems to be like a regional split for that. Like, uh, way up north, they tend to be more gray and white, so they can blend in with the snow. And further south, they tend to be more black and brown, so they can blend in with the woods or, or the tall grasses. Yeah, I mean, big, that's kind of the differentiation between a Bigfoot and a Yeti, almost, mm -hmm. from my point of view, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the major thing. Yetis are usually white, and Bigfoots are usually more more black or brown. Um, the other thing is Yetis are apparently more aggressive. Ah. If, if there are good videos out there, then that would explain why sometimes they look so blended. Mm -hmm. You just can't, like, they're blended into the trees or something. You just can't see them. Yeah, and another thing that helps them blend, um, I know you guys have seen ghillie suits before. Those are the suits that like snipers wear to help them blend into the underbrush. It basically looks like they're wearing a carpet on their back. I think that animals, in particular Bigfoot and Dogman, almost have a natural ghillie suit. 
because mud and twigs and you know other leaves and things like that just naturally stick to their fur and so when they crouch down they just look like a pile of leaves or part of a tree yeah that's definitely what i've heard like their fur is often described as like very messy mm -hmm. that, would, that would explain it they might even purposely roll in the mud to get these things to stick to them so those are some natural reasons why we may not be able to find these cryptids but you know there might be other things as well it could be paranormal abilities like portals for example it's possible that dog dog man or even other cryptids could like go through different portals including the infamous mist portal that we've talked about yeah yeah with dog man would be a great way to avoid cameras or just being seen in general yeah and again if they hear us see us or smell us coming and they have the ability to find or create a portal, they could step through that thing before anybody ever knows they were there. Yeah. yeah. It's possible that they could sh shape change, too. True. Uh, sometimes people will, will see, like, a dog man first, and then they'll see, like, a bear after that, for mm -hmm. example. Also, into the idea of a skinwalker, which we've discussed quite a few times, it could, sh it could shape into anything, um, if, it, if it is that case, anyway. And we've talked about them turning into humans, too. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could see a dog man and then a few minutes later you see a human walking down the street. So this is, this could be kind of related to portals, but it's possible these cryptids could teleport as well. I'm mainly thinking of Mothman with this one, but if there is a link between them and aliens, you know, maybe aliens beam them up to the mothership when they're sighted, <laughs> who knows? It's possible that these cryptids could go like invisible as well. I suppose you could argue that they could be like ghosts as well because um, ghosts can like disappear and I, I've heard people describe seeing a distortion almost like from the movie Predator where they just see like a waviness in space and then suddenly they see the cryptid and then it's gone you know again that kind of ties into the alien theory maybe maybe there's an alien cloaking device on these things now winding it back to kind of the normalized kind of theories um, there could be some different hiding spots for these cryptids one of them being possibly underground or caves. Now, with this section, I, I'm i probably not gonna bring up Bigfoot because if a, you see a Bigfoot going into a cave, I'm probably gonna predict that it's a bear. <laughs> well, now the first season of Expedition Bigfoot, they were, or maybe it was the second season in Kentucky, they kept finding these caves and they were convinced there was a Bigfoot living in one of those caves. Really? But again, maybe they, they were mistaking a bear for a Bigfoot. Who yeah. Knows? Now, kind of conjuring what I just said, there have been some some pieces of film that I, where I've seen like literal animal bones being left in caves mm -hmm. or like you know little dark dark areas mm -hmm. um, that could definitely le lead to the idea of a predator or cryptid like that of the sizes that we're thinking of possibly being there. Now, I'm no expert on this, but I have heard people on these Bigfoot shows say that normal predators don't do that. They, they eat something where where they killed it. They don't drag it back to a den. They don't, you know, store it. They don't do it. You, you shouldn't find big piles of bones from a normal predator. Yeah, so like if it's like a maybe a pig or something somewhat big on a farm, it mm -hmm. would literally be a dead carcass right there on the grass. Exactly. So that that's one of those things whenever they find a cave or a, you know, a nest or whatever that's got a bunch of bones in it, they immediately say, "Okay, this was a Bigfoot, this was a dog man, this was this was something not normal." There's also theories that um that say like dog man or Bigfoot or whatever can travel through caves or yeah. tunnels. Yeah, a lot of caves connect deep down, and people don't always know where they come out. And it can help them to travel without being seen. And this is where Bigfoot would come in, in my opinion, hiding behind trees. Although Bigfoot is known to be big and possibly wide, it's it's very well possible that a Bigfoot could be hiding behind many trees. I mean, I've seen some big ones. Yeah, or he could be up in trees. Bigfoot mm -hmm. can climb, apparently. Sometimes we hear encounters of dogmen hiding in trees too, like yeah. the leaves, right? Mm hmm. I remember, I think it was the Michigan dogman, uh, one of the accounts there had him jumping from tree to tree. You know, any on foot cryptid, I guess, but that's what that's kind of strength, uh, definitely could uh, climb anything, now that I think about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, lots of arm strength. Another thing related to trees, I remember seeing on um, the Alaskan Bigfoot show, 
um, the natives there, um, the Eskimos, they believe that Bigfoot can actually use a tree as a dimensional portal. And I know that goes back to what you were saying before, but they, they can actually step into a tree to disappear. <laughs> yeah, and then kind of going into the ocean side of things, of cryptids, I mean, think of Loch Ness Monster, any sea serpent that isn't really confirmed to be real. Obviously, there, there's an easy way for those cryptids to hide, hide deep under the water where it is unexplored by humans and many other animals. Mm -hmm. Someone told me once that we have explored a greater percentage of the moon than we've explored of our own oceans. That's an insane comparison. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that that's a really good representation, actually. Yeah. So those are all potential explanations for why cryptids hide so well. Knowing all those things, do you buy it? Do, do you think that there are cryptids out there that could be using these, these techniques to hide? Or do you think that the the real reason nobody's seeing cryptids is because they don't exist? With, with, with the little evidence that we have of these cryptids, there is a sm very small chance that they're not real, some of them. Mm -hmm. But with especially with the deep sea cryptids that's a way higher chance in comparison to a teleporting mothman with these insane abilities that's still a, a possible somewhat it would probably not be like all of them i think it'd maybe be like one thing that they're really good at they always do that to avoid people with these similar abilities to hide i mean there has to be some connection or some relatability to well, to all of them. Mm -hmm. And I guess I go back to the fact that new species are found every year. And they're not all these little microscopic bugs that they're finding in the Amazon or these weird things at the bottom of the ocean that keep turning up. There are legitimate larger size creatures that turn up every now and then. And we had no idea that they existed. You know, they didn't show up on camera. They didn't have any dead bodies laying around or anything for us to examine. So if they were able to pull this off for 50,000 years, why couldn't Bigfoot or Dog? We're going to keep looking. And, uh, you know, certainly if you have seen a Bigfoot, a Dog Man, a Moth Man, a Loch Ness Monster, anything along those lines, we'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you have any thoughts on how these creatures are able to evade detection so well. We'd love to hear about that too. As always, thanks for listening and thanks for subscribing. <laughs>